This little video is about what is called drawn work or hem stitching. You can see here that gives us an idea of the scale. I'm going to zoom in here. All of this has been sewn by hand. So what we're going to be doing are these little stitches here. These were little handkerchiefs, probably from the 1950s, and they're all embroidered and worked by hand. The hem stitching we're going to be creating is a variation of this. This is another handkerchief that has a double folded border so that the hem stitching itself sews the fold of the border up to the ground fabric. As you can see here, this is a linen. It's a plain weave, not a twill. It has a little space between the fibers. You're going to be drawing out the yarns from the fabric, and that's why I say linen works better for this, because the fiber itself is stronger. For the sample for the assignment, you don't have to have a large piece. This is roughly four inches by three inches. You want to find the grain that we're going to be pulling out to turn. We're going to be making a fold and a fold again. So the object here is to pull one fabric, one thread out. And you have to be gentle. Don't be impatient. Be very careful. The first one, this is called teasing out. And what you're going to be doing here is pulling one thread. And let's just take another just to be safe. What you'll find is that after the first thread, pulls out. The next threads are easier to tease out. Okay, I'm going to pull here half inch and half inch. So this total distance is going to be one inch and we will have three rows I have the three threads pulled, and then this is going to be where the fold ends up. So I'm going to take the scissors now and cut along this row. This is so everything falls on green. You need everything to fall on green to make this really successful. So then what will happen, I'm going to go over to the pressing table. I'm going to press this over and over again. And once I've pressed it, I'll thread baste, and that's going to set us up to make the hem stitch. Here we have our roll hem turned up and basted, ready for the next step. The next step then is going to be teasing out the threads just above the fold.
So when you're teasing out the threads, the number of threads that you want to tease out, that is up to you as the designer. But what I would say is have there be at least a quarter of an inch of um, thread that you've taken out. This is going to make things uh, look better in the next step. And again, what you're going to find as you go along, the more thread you take out, the easier it's going to be to remove more threads. I'm going to work ahead. I'll be back here with the finished piece. So here we have everything pressed and ready to go. As you can see, there is about a quarter of an inch distance between here and here. So to begin, you want to conceal your knot in there. And then this is a sideways blanket stitch. I like to have the thread coming up. So you come in and you choose a certain number of yarns. And you can see here it creates a little loop. And then you give it a pull Then you come in right there, pull the stitch closed, and then again you just repeat thread goes behind the needle. And then you catch the fold of the fabric right there between the two little bundles. And you just keep repeating. Now this is called counted work because if you're really, really being very persnickety about this, which is probably what they did when they were making these little hankies, they would count the number of yarns so that each one had the same number of yarns in the bundle. It all goes exactly the same way. Thread goes behind the needle, up to down, and zoom in on that for you so you can really see it. There you go. This is what's called the single. You can have a single row of this as a hem stitching. So what I will do is I'm going to sew this all the way across and I will meet you back here and show you what it looks like. Now, if you're running out of thread, which I'm probably about to do, I'm gonna show you how to knot off and get a new thread on. The first step is knotting off. So you tie this off here and then you stitch once and once again. So you knot off and you bury the thread between the layers. Then 
pull it slightly, trim, so that your thread end is buried midway between the two. Next, I'm going to change thread colors because we're going to turn around and go back the opposite way. Now we're going to add on the thread. So I've re-threaded with some blue, and I've tied a knot at the end of the thread, and you're going to work through and emerge, and you'll see that knot. But you take a stitch, and you pull. You'll trim this knot off later. Now we're ready to continue. But before we continue, I'm going to trim off this knot because what we're going to do next is turn around and work the other way. And I'm going to show you how to make that turn. Okay, we're back. And so I'm going to make one stitch here and catch this fold. It's two o'clock now, just so you know. And take another group. Okay, and then catch this fold. Now, this is where I'm gonna turn this around because we want to jump across, because this is single. This is going to be one sample, single hem stitch. The next one is going to be double. So we're going to be tying these little bundles off at the same intersections. So we've caught this. We then want to put the needle in through there. And then what you're going to do is bring it over to here. And I like to just secure that just so it doesn't get untied. So we've anchored it right there. Now I'm going to flip this over. It is exactly the same stitch. This is like watching paint dry, but I find it endlessly fascinating. And so with each stitch, you're going to be tying off one little bundle, like so. This is what I call double. I'm going to work across probably for about an inch or so, and I will meet you back here. Okay, I'm going to make one more stitch, then we're going to create the offset. Okay, there we are. I'm going to secure that so it won't unravel. understand looking at this you see the colors this is what it looks like from the other side but if you were going to be doing this with a real fabric you would be matching the thread to the fabric and so this really would disappear okay the next one here we've just grabbed each bundle directly across so it makes it look like a ladder the offset we're going to actually start by finding a point midway
So midway between here and here. So the bundle, we're going to take half from this one, half from the next one. So it's going to create what looks like a little zigzag. The stitch is exactly the same. And we work across. Taking half of one bundle and half of the next one over. And after working through a few, you'll see that it makes a little bit of a zigzag. Again, like watching paint dry, I find it fascinating. So when you're working this on your sample, say if you have a six inch sample, two inches of the single, two inches of the double, and two inches of the offset. So I'm going to go and work probably another two or three, and then I'll meet you back here. So here we are. To re review, we started from here and we worked this way. We jumped across and then we worked back this way. So I pressed this, taken the basting out so you can get a good look at what it looks like. But with matching thread, it's much prettier. So let me show you some with matching thread. There you are. That's the other side. Now, you're probably wondering, whatever am I going to use this for? One little trick you can do is you can actually cut, unravel it long, cut it, and make fringe. Or, what I rather like, if you're working with a wool that the fibers can tease out, you can create something like this or this. So this is a technique that may seem like it's labor intensive and you probably want, don't want to use it because it's considered old fashioned, but you can actually bring some new life into this. So that is the lesson on hem stitching.